Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and nothing in all creation can stop that message from going out. The stone on the tomb couldn't stop it. The soldiers who were placed there by Pilate couldn't stop it. The the seal around the stone couldn't stop it. The Jewish leaders and their lies couldn't stop it. And nothing in all creation can stop the good news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead from going forth. I pray that this service would bless you, that that God's word proclaimed here from this place would resound in your heart and in your mind and bring the joy of Christ's resurrection, the courage of life in him, and the hope, the hope of his coming again in even greater glory into your life. God bless your worship today. We stand together for our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Let us sing.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue by singing, This is the Feast. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading from the book of Job, chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that, they, that with an iron pen and lead, they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle is from Paul's, St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise together to sing Alleluia and hear the very words of the Holy Gospel. Let us sing. Gospel is according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter, that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together now in confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resound.
is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Has there ever been a more joyful acclamation? Has there ever been a more joyful Easter than this one? I know many of you might be saying, well, what's so joyful about it? Um, and in a way, I feel that it's, <laughs> it is the most bittersweet Easter. It is the most joyful and also at the same time, it is such an odd thing. But it's in the midst of darkness that the light shines brightest, right? In that contrast between a world wrapped in kind of the fear of death and of sickness, that this message of life conquering death, light conquering darkness, and joy banishing fear comes out so clearly. But something's missing. At least, I think something's missing, right? And I don't mean the obvious thing. Obviously, something is missing because I'm preaching to you through a video. But something's missing in our gospel reading. And I want to draw your attention to that today. In some ways, being a preacher on Easter Sunday morning is the easiest and also the hardest. It is the easiest because I have a simple job to proclaim to you that Christ is risen. But it's the hardest because what can I say that we haven't already said. 
And what can I say that hasn't been better said in the hymns, in the readings, in the prayers, and all these things? So I just want to draw your attention today to this one little oddity that something is missing in the gospel reading for Easter. You notice who's there. You've got the tomb, you've got the angels, you've got the women all coming to the tomb. And something's missing. Of course, maybe the immediate answer you're thinking of is that, yeah, pastor, that's the whole point. Jesus isn't there. He's risen. He's missing from the tomb. He's not dead in the tomb, in the grave anymore, because he is risen. And that's right. That's right. It's Jesus who's missing. But I don't mean that he's missing simply because he's risen. That's not what's strange to me. What's odd is that he's not there himself to announce the message. There's an angel who's doing it. There are his servants, his ministers, who are there to announce the message to these scared and frightened women. But Jesus isn't there. Where is he? Look again at the message of the angels. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. That is the crucified one, right? That's his title. He is the one who has been crucified, and that crucifixion fixes his identity forever. He is the one who offered himself on the cross for the sins of the world. Yes, he is still the crucified one. He still has those marks in his hands. He still has the spear wound in his side, and we rejoice because of that. Not because it's gory and sad, but because in those wounds, by those wounds, we have healing now and forevermore. And in them, in those wounds, we rejoice. For our sins are washed away by his blood. Our sins are done away with and we are reconciled to God. So, okay, but back to the point, right? Back to the message. You are seeking Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified one. He isn't here. He is risen. Okay, but where is he? Tell me, angel, where is my Lord? Right, you can think of Mary Magdalene. This comes out so clearly in the Gospel of John, who asks, the angels have to ask her, why are you weeping? And she says, because I can't find my Lord. We are not satisfied until we are with our Lord. That is the basic impulse of our religion. Our desire is to be with him forever. And so something is missing at the tomb. It's good that it's empty, that Jesus isn't there, but it's also sad that he's not there. Where is he? To Galilee he goes before you. There you will see him just as he said. At the tomb, at the tomb, the women do not find Jesus. And when Peter and John have their race to the tomb, and John wants you to know that he got there first, so that the whole church knows forever that he outran Peter, they don't find Jesus, at least not at first. But instead they get a promise. He is the one who goes ahead of you. And you will find him just as he promises. We don't have Jesus visibly present with us. And it brings us sadness. There is a, a sadness in every Easter celebration that the Lord is not here. There's great joy, of course, but we wish that we were finally with him forever. We aren't given to see that in this life. We are given the same promise that those women got from the angels. He is going ahead of you. Here's how to think of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning when you can't be in church. Here's how to think of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning and always when you don't know what the next day, the next hour, the next minute, the next second is going to hold for you, for your loved one, for whoever it may be, he is the one who's going ahead of us. And he is making safe the way. The shepherd goes ahead of the sheep. Jesus says this in John chapter 10. My sheep follow after me. I lead them in and I lead them out. And that's what you have at the resurrection. Christ promising to go ahead of his disciples and giving them the promise that they will find things just as he says that they are. Does he say that it will always be easy for Christians in the world? Does he say that we will always have nice and calm and peaceful times? Or does he say sometimes it's going to be rocky? Sometimes you're going to face trials. 
Sometimes there's going to be tribulation. Sometimes there's going to be darknesses. But always, I go ahead of you. I go before you. And you will find things to be just as I say that they are. So rejoice in the promises today, even if you can't have the fullness of being in the church. Even if you can't smell these Easter lilies behind you, I'll smell them for you. They smell wonderful. Even if you can't hear the organ playing, you can't hear people singing next to you, hopefully the person next to you on the couch is shouting out, Jesus Christ is risen today. But you do have this promise of Jesus and cling to it by faith. Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Even though he says that he will go ahead of them to Galilee, do you know, sometimes Jesus seems just can't help himself. And so we know that he didn't leave those women there at the tomb without him, but he came to Mary Magdalene. We know that he didn't make those disciples wait until they got to Galilee, but he came to them in the upper room. We know that Jesus promised to meet them in Galilee, but sometimes he just can't help himself. And so he comes to us even now in the preaching of his word, in the celebration of the sacraments of the church, in holy baptism, and especially in the Lord's Supper, our Lord comes to us again and again and says, yeah, I know, I promised that you would see me at the end, but I just couldn't wait. Come, take and eat, take and drink my body, my blood, given and shed for you, that you may know and taste and see that the Lord is good, supremely good. Something's missing at the tomb. But something is given there too, a promise. Something is missing for you this Easter. I'm sure you can feel it even as I can feel it. But we have this promise that our Lord goes ahead of us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine, and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. Strengthen those who have been sent, especially Reverend Nauman in Sri Lanka. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places, and that the word of God may go forth unfettered. We commend to you the care of our schools and pray that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Visit, O Lord, the homes in which your people dwell and sanctify them by your presence. Grant that husbands and wives, parents and children may live together in peace and harmony according to your word, and that we may all grow in our steadfastness to your holy word, which sanctifies every place where it is read and prayed. Graciously defend us from all calamity, by fire and water, from war, and especially we pray now from pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and the needy, the comforter of the distressed and those in sorrow. Accept 
we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. For by his blood, your son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sin may be drowned through daily repentance and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We sing our final hymn.